All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to start saying all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakah Kudash. The bonds to our apostles, Ezra Milson, Shalom, Wakasa, Lahabakyar, which is peace and mercy to the elect throughout the four corners, wherever you may be. On our brother Amar, from the branch of GMS Cleveland, I'll uh, come back at you with another lesson. Uh, Lord will us be edifying. Um, and this is going to be a, a lesson going into uh, counsel and the importance of counsel. And um, when you understand uh, the importance of counsel, uh, basically, um, matter of fact, before I even start uh, with the scripture, let me just get into it. When you look at the word counsel in the etymology, etymon online, all right, it's going to say counsel. It's going to say C1200. It says uh, advice or given instruction. All right, 1300, mutual advising or in interchange of opinions. Constellation, uh, uh, consolation. All right, once this is from late Latin, concilium, plan, opinion. All right, so when you when you seek counsel, you're basically getting what um, instruction or um, somebody's, uh, you know, opinion, so to speak. But see, the, the thing about... Uh, you know, brothers that are in the truth while you're in the truth. Um, and when you get counsel from brethren, especially elders, um, that counsel is divine uh, opinion, uh, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Like meaning like the brother's thoughts and uh, is a, his mindset is um, is that after Yahweh Shem Shah and he's thinking uh, about scriptures, he's thinking about the mindset of Yahweh Shem Shah as opposed to him just uh, thinking um on his own um, merit, thinking you know, thinking uh, outside of the scriptures. A men of the Lord, when you go to a brother uh, for counsel, men of the Lord will think about the scriptures and they will have Yahweh Hashem and the scriptures in their uh, um, in uh, their opinion, in their thoughts. So you can you 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 can basically uh, bank on it that the advice that they're giving you is is uh, after godliness, after the scriptures, and not after their own heart, not not after their own lust. So that's the difference between uh, uh, getting uh, counsel, which is basically advice or um, uh, somebody's uh, instructions or opinions uh, that are the brothers that are in the truth or as opposed to men uh, that are in the world. So now that we got that out of the way, um, let me get I just looked I, I, I put in the word counsel and it appears in the scriptures uh, apparently. 174 times so i'm just going to read a few of them it's not going to be a long uh lesson it was just something that uh you know that personally happened to me and it was something that you know, i feel like i needed to do a video on and uh I, and i pray it was edifying because we all as you know as men in this truth you know, or women but the focal point is men we all have shortcomings and we all have uh things um you know that we need counsel on um rather is um something that um um, that we just not are unsure of, or it's just something that you know you you personally uh you know would like to hear like to hear another opinion on, and what what better to hear an opinion uh uh from someone uh that is that is in the truth and that you see as a man of the Lord, and has wisdom concerning the scriptures. So anyway, Proverbs eleven verse fourteen, it says, "Where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety." So even when you look at our people as a whole, the reason why our people are at the bottom, they are in this, uh, you know, um, you know, fucked up position is basically because of there's, you know, there's no, there's no counsel uh, of, 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 uh, of the, um, of your how about Shimiao Sha, you know what I'm saying? They might be getting counsels uh, from, um, you know, people of the world. And uh, people that see things uh, from a worldly perspective and from a carnal perspective, but you have, to, if you are an Israelite, indeed you or anybody in general, but in particular Israelites, you have to have counsel of that of a uh, Yahweh Shimiel Shah. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't, you know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah, you know it's not gonna go well. But it says, uh, but the multitude of counselors, it says, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety, right? Because they're gonna guide you what based on what the will of the Lord. They're gonna base you. They're gonna guide you based on what uh, logic, reasoning. You know what I'm saying, and more importantly, the scriptures. You know what I'm saying, which overrides everything. Our own opinions, our own thoughts, our own feelings. So the will of the Lord overrides all that, and a man of the Lord will make sure that is at the forefront 
uh, of his thoughts, uh, that of the forefront of his uh, mindset, which is what the will of the Lord, not his own opinion, not his own um, feelings. So that that is the major difference between getting counsel uh, between somebody in the world as opposed to somebody that is in the truth, more importantly, a man of the Lord. So this is uh, Proverbs 12, verse 15. And I'm just going through a few scriptures that has the word counsel in it that I see uh, fit this lesson. It says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkens unto counsel is wise. Right? Because we all have moments that are, um, like I said, considered shortcomings and that can be considered foolish. Um because you know, I don't want to call the brother a fool, you know what I'm saying? Because Scripture say call no man a fool. Um, but um, you just you just want to be mindful of your decisions and if they uh, if they align with uh, Yahweh Bashim El uh will, you know what I'm saying? So it says it says Proverbs twelve and fifteen: the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, right? Because that you know we can be deceived in the flesh. You can be thinking you're in the right, and then it can be a, a demon or Satan. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hopping on you to make you think you're right. It says, but he that hearkened unto counsel is wise. Right. So if you hearken unto counsel, you're considered wise because you are, uh, you know, letting the will of the Lord have free course. The word of Yahweh Shem Shah have free course. You are um, being open minded unto, you know, um, other men that you see fit. Uh, uh, that have the um, the, the spirit of Yahweh Bashim and Shah, you're not just being closed minded, so you're taking into consideration this thing is not about you, uh, and that's that ultimately is about the, the will of the Lord, so that is an important uh, factor. Um, uh, Proverbs 15 and 22 without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of the counselors, they are established, man. You know what I'm saying? So once again, it just goes into having um, a counsel and uh, making sure that uh, with the thoughts that you're thinking are, like I said, are in alignment or in agreement with the will of the Lord. Um, let me get this last scripture, and I'm going to get an account of the uh, importance of um, of counsel. You know what I'm saying? In the scriptures, uh, I'm getting it now, but I'm getting I'm going to get a particular story regarding that. Um, Proverbs 19, verse 21, it says, um, it says, there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand, man. Right. So we all have thoughts and things that we think are right and on point, you know what I'm saying, or, or in the spirit. But you have to remember that uh, the will of the Lord the counsel of the Lord, that is ultimately the thing that will uh, prosper and, and, and stand at the end of the day. So just be mindful, man. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. And we're going to get this account in uh, the book of Second Kings. What's that? I think it's when Rarebone got into uh, power. I have to go back a little bit. Let me see. Uh, Bear with me a little bit, man. But it's an account when um when the rare bone um, got into power and uh he uh he uh yeah, I think this is it. This is, yeah. Let me see uh Yeah, yeah, so yeah, all right, here we go. Yep. This is uh this so this is a, a story um going into the topic of what I'm talking about regarding counsel and the importance of it and that how counsel um can make or break a decision that you have um in your mind, you know what I'm saying? Um because of a brother if you if you're conflicted with you know between your thoughts on on what to do and the brother give you counsel and you don't hearken into it it can make or break that 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 choice that you uh, went with. You know what I'm saying? If a brother tell you go left and you go right, you know what I'm saying? Guess what? That decision could it it can ultimately, you know, realistically speaking, can cause you your life. You know what I'm saying? All jokes aside, um, First King chapter twelve verse one it says, "And Rehoboam went to Shechem. Shechem. It says, uh, for all Israel would come to uh, Shechem to make him king." It says, and it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, 
or who was who was yet in Egypt heard of it. It says for he was for he was fled from the presence of King uh, Solomon and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. It says verse three that they sent and called him in Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Jeroboam saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. So going back to three, it says uh, that they sent and called him in Jeroboam. It says, and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Jeroboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make thou the, the grievous servants of thy father. It says, and his, and his heavy yoke, which he put on us, put upon us lighter. It says, and we will serve thee. So, right, they were looking for basically relief, you know what I'm saying, uh, from, um, um, you know, from, uh, I believe, um, uh, you know, the, the uh, I believe, uh, you know, what I'm saying the previous uh, king, I believe it's Solomon. You know, what I'm saying, um, and the things that the, uh, the that the people were going through, so it was looking for relief, right? So when you go with verse two, I'm gonna read it again. It came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled uh, from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. It says uh, that they sent and called him in Jeroboam, and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Jeroboam, Jeroboam saying, the, Thy father. It says, And all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Jeroboam, saying, uh, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Yeah, so right, they're talking about what Solomon, because the father of uh, Jeroboam was Solomon. Now therefore make thou the grievous uh, servants of thy father, and his, he and his heavy yoke, uh, which he had put upon us lighter, and we shall serve thee. All right, so verse five, and he, and he said unto them, "Depart, depart yet for three days, and then come again to me." And the people departed. Right, it says, and and, and King Rehoboam, um, which is the son of Solomon, cons consulted with the old man that stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived, and said, "How do ye advise uh, that I might answer this people?" So he was he was he suck he was seeking counsel, all right, from the men that were uh, around the time of his father Solomon, that served Solomon. Verse seven, and they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and will serve them and answer them and speak uh, good words to them, and then they will be thy servants forever. So this is the counsel that the old men gave that were with King Solomon. They were saying like basically like, look, bro, if you will pretty much be a servant unto them and hearken to what they got to say and listen to them and pretty much take heed to, you know, you know, their, uh, you know, concerns. Look, like these people will serve you forever. So let's read on with, uh, let's read on into the story. But he forsook the counsel. You see that? But he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him and consulted with the young men that uh, were give, that grown up with him, and which stood before him. And he said to them, or what counsel give ye that we may answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father uh, did put upon us lighter. So he said so he forsook the old man's counsel that was with his father, King Solomon. He looked for the men that he grew up with. Right? So it says, And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it it says, but make thou a letter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, Mate, my little finger shall be thicker than, the, than my father's noise. And now, whereas my whereas my father did laid you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father have chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Jeroboam the third day, as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered, the People roughly and forsook. The old men's counsel that gave them and that and spake to them after the counsel of the young man saying, My father made uh, your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Right. So they right, rare bone, he forsook, like I said, his um the old men that were with uh, uh his father Solomon and he and he he hearkened unto uh the men of his age and the men that he grew up with, he listened to them. 
You know what I'm saying? It was pretty much went bad. You know what I'm saying? This is verse 15. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, but for the cause was uh, from the Lord, and that he might perform the same which the Lord spake by Ahijah, the Selenite, uh, unto Jeroboam, the son of the bat. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse to your sense. O Israel, now see unto thine own house, David, so departed unto their tents. But as the but as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Je Judah, Jeroboam reigned over them. And King Jeroboam sent a Doram, who, who was over the uh, uh, true bite. It says, And all Israel stoned him with stones, and he died. It says that he died. Therefore, King Jeroboam made speed to get him up. To his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. And it came to pass when all Israel had heard that Jeroboam uh, was come again, that they sent and called him uh, unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, if, if, um, if Jeroboam would have basically listened unto, uh, the people, things would have went a little more smoother. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much the point of this lesson. And the point of counsel is basically if you hearken unto counsel, depending on the situation, you know what I'm saying, the circumstances and what's presented to you, things can go more smoother, better, you know what I'm saying, and uh, it'll work in your favor. But if you don't, uh, things can go south real fast. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, I uh, pray this edifying. With that, I'm going to give our praise and glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bashim, Rokakadash, Devon, the Sidapas, Israel, Millstone, the Shalom, world.